a fr- it was meant to be a funeral, but thankfully it's not the latest funeral. It's a five the latest funeral. <laughs> As they crashed out on a whimper against Atapi and for Atapi, they did what everyone expected Atapi to do. Zero zero and it was over. I might cuss a little bit because I'm really, really angry. <laughs> like why in God's name did we lose to River the lead? and give them three points and they did nothing with it back to back nil nils against both Almeria and Etafia. Like come on. Like you're the funniest and most criminal part. Okay, so Gonzalo in, in the last embers of in the dying embers of this game, right? Because at times in the second half, Almeria were in eighteenth, then it was real bad. It was going back and forth between the two. Yeah. But what happened when Valdez was so close to going down. First of all, Gonzalo Plata hits a wicked shot just an inch past the post and it would have been like goal of the season or something. And then a few minutes later, they have like a, set, a free kick right from wide. Everyone is up for Valdez, even Massive. Yeah. So, you have two options if you're Gonzalo Plata. One, lump it into the box. Two, Dribble short and lose the ball. Guess which <laughs> option he took. <laughs> Spoiler alert. He did he did the most stupid thing I've seen a player do. Like honestly, you sc- you ruined our clean sheet record for nothing. <laughs> I, I'm holding myself back from cursing, but I don't want us to get the ball to well, yeah. Like okay, like you all, they only have themselves to blame because. You know, last week we said so all six teams have a chance to go down, some more likely than others. But yeah. one thing everyone shares is that they have their fit in their own hands. Win and you're safe. Is f- yeah. I, I think it's kind of- <laughs> uh, do we do we need a crying emoji for you? <laughs> crying proudly bleeps, to be honest. Let's- I just yeah. yeah. myself. I may sound like I'm laughing, but inside I'm actually so confused and angry. I'm like, is my relegated for this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you can almost see this coming though, because you know that um, exactly. they weren't they weren't the strongest team going into their or or they had the toughest run going into the last four or five games of the season. So they're the ones that were most likely to get relegated and I, and I feel for Varadolid I feel the game that really changed everything for them was that game at Mestaya that mistake by Massif and how much would he regret it because if Massif doesn't make that mistake maybe Valencia doesn't come back and it's Valencia in the relegation zone not them and it, I feel that's the game where that they got relegated that's the turning point of their season because after that it was, yeah, it was even like after a... that like even after that like the thing is that I wouldn't really consider their run a tough run. It's more besides the Barca game, it's more of a double-edged sword one run where if you win, you're safe and you kill someone else in the process. And in their case, they didn't win and got killed. So it's like they had it in their own hand to not just impact their face, but impact the fates of others. And they came up completely short. And you know what's funny? Like there was a time. Remember that green streak they were on where they beat Villarreal? I think they beat someone else too. And you were like, wow, these guys can actually stay up. But then to stay getting lost his record for this. Uh, but but in, in some ways, you could almost see this result happening because Bordelas is the master. Of oh, obviously. Etafe like, were obviously going to play for it. Basically, Etafe gave these guys 70 plus percent possession and said, <laughs> okay, figure out what you're going to do with it. We are just going to chill here. Like, it's terrorism, you know, you really hate to see it, but it works. And, you know, it's Eta- why they're, Etafe, they're I say. For so long. Yeah, that's why they've been in La Liga for so long because yeah. was, as soon as Jose Borda last came in, I'm like, these guys aren't going down. Like, they're going to battle, yeah. they're going to fight hard. Borda last is without Arete again. And, um, and I know a lot of people, Ma- Jaime Mata. <laughs> Jaime Mata, yeah. Yeah, I know a lot of people don't like Hitafe, but personally, I feel I prefer them to buy the league because I feel Hitafe, there's something about them. There's that, um, 
identity that they have that they didn't have in mm-hmm. previous situations. And yeah. that's why I feel they stayed up so many times and they keep on beating the drop year after year. Exactly. Like, um, you know, it's always important to have an identity to like, okay, why do you, if for, so, for a casual fan, like, why do you stand out above yeah. or against other teams? And that's a topic for you. So, yeah, uh, not looking forward to <laughs> swatching them next season in Wonder Brothers. I can't play like with <laughs> no Kiki does. Sanchez Flores. They were trying to like play more expressive style. It was really good last season. This season, like I, I feel like they could have sacked him earlier, but like you yeah. can tell, like the squad just lacked quality because they were losing by the odd goal a lot. I, but you know what? I, I wonder what went wrong for them because they. Everyone raved about the recruitment. Everyone called them. Uh, Me, the I said they finished the ninth. Yeah, yeah. So, so what were wrong for it happening? Like, I mean, we really overrated some of these players. I, I also <laughs> feel like they didn't properly replace someone like um, Matteo Oliveira because they've played like a centre back at left back or left wing back, a right back there. Like Christian Porto has played there. Or crying out loud so I felt like also some of the players that just came in there I think they were kind of whining to us and like I expected I was like okay I'm going to dismiss Porto's awful season at Real Sociedad and say maybe he needs to come that level but you know nothing changed. The other, I guess one of the players that did like step up for them besides the now was like you know near near you know starting more games added some Attack, attacking spark to attack, which they really needed. Even when Borderlands came, I can't like there was a time when they scored two goals in four games, so they really stayed up the heart and absolutely dug at Borderlands win. And again, if you're someone who likes beautiful football, you are your eyes are going to be bleeding right now, <laughs> and you're going to be like, Do I really want to come back and watch this next season? No, I can understand why a lot of people don't like them, but this has been such a fascinating relegation battle. And if I compare this with other leagues, which um, I'm going to do and I don't like, but for example, if you were a team like Wolves, you finished with 41 points in England, you would have been just yeah. one point away from the bottom three. If with the same amount of points, 40 points usually keeps you up, but by delayed went down with 40 points. It just shows the the quality or like the points total or the consistency you needed to stay up in this La Liga season. Exactly. Like, it's been really like I, I think it's like some mid-tip, some teams that met last year got absolutely worse. Some teams that were like at the bottom. Like the the two teams I'm talking about in particular like Hetafe and Valencia and Celta stayed up comfortably enough last season and this season yeah. they're like fighting to the last day and then you had a real outlier like Mallorca, like pushing for Europe to the last day. So, <laughs> and then for a while you had Sevilla being down here as well. Yeah, so it's yeah. like you, it was like the table was just really topsy turvy. So I think kind of towards the end, the table started correcting itself a little bit to like kind of the norm because you saw Sevilla coming up. But anyway. It's crazy. It's been crazy. We thought so many teams would go down. Sevilla, we thought would go down. Yeah. You know, the guys yeah. that were obviously managed to stay up by the skin of their teeth today. Yeah. Really crazy. Yeah, it's been it's been a really insane, um, insane um, relegation battle. But let's talk about some of the winners from this relegation battle. And I'm going to start with Southampton because they got the most magnificent results. And we have to talk about Gabri Vega. Is a player that. A lot of um, Celta fans are probably scratching their head why Celta Vigo went selling so, for so much. And when he scores two goals against Barca, it's past it's level stuff. It's like he's a living legend now for for La Liga yeah. or, and for Celta, for Celta, I mean. Yeah, like, you know, he really stepped up. Like, you could see, because he's a Celta boy, right? So you could see, like, this stress on his face when... Like he was on the bench waiting. He, he, after he scored his second goal, shortly after the guy was like, you know what, I've given everything I've done. I can't play anymore. You know, like from that point of view, it was really like fascinating to watch. And you know, if this ends up being his last game for Celta, like what a way to go, man. <laughs> this is truly Aspas level stuff. And you know, from the point of someone whose team 
he sells us little boys sometimes. You know, he can go. <laughs> so we have only an old ass pass to worry about. <laughs> Who actually didn't score against us for once this season. So yeah, but his minimum he scored against. He, he's Robin did, but he's Robin is leaving. So let's see how the Batman does next year. In any yeah, case, you know something else. Also, though. Yes. What went wrong for them is that they had not played Barcelona early, earlier. Let yeah. me tell you why. Like oh, yeah. since since 2015, we've not done the double over them. So we are not going to win today. I think any Barcelona fan knew that, <laughs> you know, like. We are like a good source of points for them at least once a season. So, yeah, thanks to us, they stayed up. Yeah, and but and, against other teams, it was really like, yeah, I don't know what they were doing sometimes. Yeah, they're, they're a bit weird because like we even discussed them last week in that they went on this amazing run where you could tell that you could everyone could see and ask questions about maybe they get into Europe and. Two points away from game. Europe, exactly. Yeah, and they just collapse like dramatically, and it's it's crazy. And I think that's what's been theme in this season. It's just been it's just been up and down. It's just had a lot of vertigo in the bottom areas or in the top seven race, mm-hmm. and that's something that's been exciting. I want to mention something about Barcelona, and this is something we discussed up there. And I'm going to go on not not really a mini rant, but I'm going to make some points and statements. I would say Barcelona have been very unprofessional in this relegation battle and the way they've approached it and in terms of what other teams are fighting for, they haven't given them the, the competition, the respect it deserves in how they've approached this, in my opinion. Because they play against Vital Lead and Barcelona is not a team that usually concedes three goals, even two goals this season, and they concede three goals to Vital Lead. Against Celta, I feel maybe they could have played a better team and they could have made things a bit difficult for Celta. But when you compare Barcelona's attitude compared to Elche's attitude, I think it leaves a lot to be desired because it caused a lot of stress for fans, not just Espanol fans, but Cadiz fans or Amarillo fans or Valencia fans. Or you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like like I said last week, Barcelona trained that river, they gave me within. wasn't actually going to affect Espanol really, really, because the team was that Hetafe and other teams also really flipped the relegation table completely wide open. Yeah. So, I felt like what all they did was just create extra stress for their things. Like, but th- think of it this way, Taj. Without <laughs> our unprofessionalism, they w- you wouldn't be feeling stressed now. And stress is a good thing sometimes. No, think about it. If Alessi had stayed up comfortably, you wouldn't remember this season at all. Now you remember it. You have PTSD for life. <laughs> I, know, I know. Yeah, I should talk about Valencia uh, or, or Maria. Yeah. Um, let's talk about that Maria. Like that was because that, yeah. that was that game is probably one of the best of the season. With how yeah, yeah. crazy it was. Yeah, it's a classic. It's a very classic La Liga relegation battle, and I feel it played subconsciously played on the mind of the Valladolid players. I remember we were talking about Dortmund last week about how when Cologne scored, it was the worst possible outcome for Dortmund, and when Luke Colioso scored uh, or Luke Colioso scored the third goal for Espanyol. Mm-hmm. I could, you could tell in Baidili Stadium there was a bit of relaxation because Espanyol kept on going up and mm-hmm. that, that that impacted them a lot. And this game was crazy yeah. because it starts with Poado scoring and then, I'm sorry, it starts with Bilal Torre scoring and Poado equalizes, then Pierre Gabriel makes it 2-1, then Embarba makes it 2-2 and Coleosho makes it 3-2 and Espanyol in the 8-7 minute, they get a penalty and Embarba converts it against his former side to keep his current side up. It's, it's, it's a beautiful story. Yeah, it's really, it was really, really crazy, man. And I agree with you, like, I feel like in cases like these, like, you shouldn't tell your players what's good. Like, you should just focus, first and foremost, on what you can do to help yourself. Like, I think you remember in 2021, during the title race, right, whenever yeah. Real Madrid were, when Real Madrid were ahead at San Mames, I think Simeone told his players, it, even though they were losing to us as soon as and you, you really think you should have told them, but you didn't tell them because, I mean, you should already know that as a professional, you should win your game regardless of... Like, it's, it's much better to have your faith in your hand. Even if yep. you're a type of team that doesn't want to have your faith in your own hand like athletes. <laughs> so, but the issue, though, yeah. is like, 
that that was without fans right and now with the fans like for example i i, I was watching like uh, these like three or four games together and you could hear like Vidalit fans celebrating and then i'm like did Vidalit just score and then I, uh-huh. like, two seconds later you see that espanol scored and i'm like okay and it, it's just when the fans have that atmosphere it's very difficult for the players to I guess keep their minds focused and knowing that you're able to score that one goal to yeah. give them the safety but i guess for Amaria, I, I'm really happy that they stayed up. I'm really, really happy. Same, same. They, they have a very exciting project. At 3-2, they were going down, and I was a bit worried for them. <laughs> I was worried for Valencia, too, but I was worried for them as well. And I'm very happy for them. And with Embarba, I, I just think this shows the disastrous policy of Espanyol because Espanyol traded Embarba for Lazio, and Lazio has done nothing for Espanyol, and Embarba is scoring the two goals that keeps Amaria up. Yeah, that's in Donald Trump's words, <laughs> the worst trade deal in the history of trade deals. Uh, I'm still working on the accent, but I knew it. But it's like, you know, like I said, it just goes to show you how smart Almeria's business was. Because look how many of their new signings played parts in keeping them up. That's how it did. Bill Alturi did, you know. Um, yeah, even Suarez did when it was um... Suarez. Suarez did, even though he stupidly got sent off for their most important game of the season. You know, that, these guys really and Barba, of course. You know, they really played the Leo Baptist style. Like um, so many good signings, and I can't think of one good signing as Payon made besides Hustle. Yeah, and Brathwaite. <laughs> and Brathwaite. Yeah. Yeah, but, but everything. We'll, we'll get into everything. Like, what about Maria? Yeah, like, you know, obviously to stay up in such a... Like, he all came down to a penalty kick of all three, so it must have been really stressful. Like, you could see just how many traveling fans came all the way from Andalusia to Catalonia just to see their team hopefully stay up. And at the end of the day, that kind of stress is good because if it wasn't stressful... <laughs> Uh, no, think, think about like I have felt better about this title race. I, I mean, I feel good about it, but I have felt even better if we won like last minute or something. Would yeah. the stress have been needed? Absolutely not. It would have made you be like, yeah, like you, the, the, the high after the low would be so good. Yeah, <laughs> like, so, like, like, don't you feel really happy now? I mean, <laughs> or you're going to feel really happy later because that's how yeah. it works. That's how it is. That's how it is. And uh, good luck to our Maria and um, or congrats to our Maria and congrats to Ruby as well because Ruby a few weeks ago said that forty points would be enough to keep them up. Uh, he almost looks stupid. He, he, he almost looked very stupid, but congrats to them. They got the extra points, and it's vitally that went down in their stead. And I'm going to transition to Valencia, and this was it. It didn't start well for us because uh, the first minute. Um, Isaac Perez scored the goal, and from there, you're looking at other teams' results, and you're just hoping. Especially yeah. because it was that atmosphere for Betis, it was Joaquin's final match, and everything. And when you were, when Valencia have always been in trouble this season, the young players have stepped up, and Diego Lopez steps up again. His third goal in, I think, yeah. six games. It's like in Valencia State, Valencia State up is largely down to him and a lot of the young players. <laughs> you know what? I d- when you mentioned young boys and players, I thought of a guy who is leaving his club now. Who- <laughs> 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 if you know, you know. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> okay, anyway. But I, I, before that, I was actually very angry because I just remembered how Pellegrini took Joaquin off too early, in my opinion. Like, I love the guy score a goal, but hey, <laughs> at least... At least he um, broke Zubizar. He dro- he matched Zubizarita's record. I actually thought I was actually wrong. I thought he wasn't going to match it, but yeah. he was able to. So I'm really happy for my king to like. Because for an outfield player to do that, and mind you, this is an outfield player that left the Liga for like a few years. He's really insane. And man, like you could just see him crying from minutes one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like. Yeah. And we've yeah. lost we, this 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 year. We've lost so many legends this season, man. Yeah, lost. <laughs> our, our, our childhood is just disappearing. Yeah. Even there's another one we're going to talk about later. Yeah. <laughs> All these yeah, legends. Yeah. yeah. No, not not yeah. him. Not not him. Yeah. Another one. You'll know when we get there. 
Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, like. I'm excited. Really... But, but for, for Valencia, though, I I'm, I just think it's one of those seasons where it's been catastrophic. It's disastrous. I, I don't know what else to say. But the thing is, it's disastrous in terms of the position where Valencia is because I feel this is their worst finish in, since they got relegated. I, that's, I could be wrong. And um, it's also disastrous given the fact that Valencia were in the relegation zone for so long. But at the end of the day, like you're right in terms of the emotions make it feel like a better season than it actually is because you end the season on a bit of a high in terms of not losing games. I, th- I think we only lost one or two games in the last seven, which is incredible. And that Valladolid game, I go back to it, that's what saved Valencia. If without that Valladolid game, I think we'll be gone. Right? And the Celso game as well. So um, it's 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 a decent season given the fact that young players have come up, but disastrous given the fact that this club is seems like it's going to be a relegation candidate next season unless something drastic is done in the summer. For sure. Yeah, like, massive upgrades are needed because, like, some of the players, some of Valencia's best players are their lone players. So, if they don't, like, I feel like if this bleed is not stopped, like, they're going to get relegated at some point. Like, this season was kind of pushing it way too close. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it really was. And speaking of the teams that are cockroaches almost, Cadet, your favorite team, they, they stayed up. Like, they were, they were the favorites to stay up, but going into this match, they it would have taken a miracle for them to get relegated. Yeah, I mean, because Valencia was losing, I'm like, okay, LK should just behave themselves and lose to cut this cause. And, but for a moment, I was just thinking, you know, now that Valencia has scored, if only we were they can get their act together and LK can get another one. <laughs> And maybe I'll be a very happy man, but no, like, <laughs> Escalante, the relegation survival expert, like, <laughs> last year, keep blowing these guys. <laughs> and I, I wonder if he's going to join Cardiff permanently or something. Because, yeah. I mean, the guy is really, really good for this kind of situation. He's like the Samala dice for footballers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like what will it take for Cadiz to get relegated because every year they're tipped to go down and every year they find a way to survive like this season I thought this was the end for them when, especially when they lost six games in a row at the start of the season but they still survived yeah like you know it's that I think this for people that like having faith in managers or advocates of that, this is a win for them. So I think that for me, that's the only good thing about Cadiz staying up because yeah. Sergio, right, they had faith in him last year. He kept them up. They had faith in him again this year. He kept them up. So I'm hoping they don't have faith in him next year. <laughs> <laughs> he had a few spectacular results, like the one against Atleti. He got the double against Valencia. And you look at that, and those are nine points that teams don't usually get in the relegation zone. And that's, mm. that's what saved them, essentially. Exactly. Yeah, and sure. Yeah. I'm just looking... I'm actually looking at my... Well, you get predictions I made back in August. And boy, oh God, these things are terrible. <laughs> we'll talk <laughs> about them after. Yeah, yeah, we will. Well, let's move on to brighter topics. And we're going to talk about Osasuna. And they are back in Europe after beating Girona. And this was this was a beautiful moment for us, and I'm happy. Like the, you could tell what he meant to the fans. El Sadar looks redder than ever, and they they did really well to go to New York before Girona pulled them back. Yeah, like you see, Osasuna are the exact opposite of Real Madrid. They're, they're serious team. Like they played against two rivals for the same position, and they beat two of them. Sevilla, they took six points off them this season. Although. At the time, Sevilla went through really the competitor for Europe. I think if I'm not wrong, because as soon as they didn't lose to Mallorca too. So this is a yeah. serious team that other teams should try and emulate, you know, like really I'm so happy that they are the ones that got the spot. I, I'd have been fine with anyone not named Sevilla for obvious reasons, but yeah. as soon as like for the football they played this season, like the endeavor they've shown, like getting all the way to the cup final, even though they lost it, and like they deserve something tangible from this season. And I'm glad they have that. Like, what's the secret source behind this Osasuna team? Because we spoke about the chance that they could get 
Europe, but like a lot of us were skeptical of if that it could go all the way, given the fact that they're competing against Athletic. Why did they have the final edge at the end? Yeah, because like their players are just more cons, like their attackers were just more consistent than Athletics at the end of the day, and the defense is infinitely better than during us. <laughs> like that's not even a contest. I just think like overall I sat because I remember in 2020-21 season, in January also soon our 19th, even though they like survived pretty comfortably the previous season, people had their doubts, and since then this man has just silenced all the doubts as like a cop run Europe now, like it's just incredible and I can't wait to see them in Europe next year. Like it's we suck, it's be really great to see them. But do you think that's a bit of a trap, them being in Europe? Because I remember when Espanyol went to Europe and they were so close to going down. They went down, they, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, they went down, actually, in my <laughs> bad. And, but yeah. I feel Getafe and Granada, they did better in Europe and managing Europe in La Liga. Do you think it will be similar to Granada and Getafe or will it be similar to Espanyol? I mean, you'd hope it to be similar to Getafe and Granada, but you never know. And if I remember Espanyol, it's not like they made bad signs that summer. It was just weird. But yeah. I guess like with Arasate, I can trust Arasate to even if they have a drop off in the league, I don't think it's going to be terrible or anything. True. But so you know, yeah. given the predictions which I'm going to read to all of you when we're done, you'll yeah. see that maybe I'm not the best person to be telling you about football. <laughs> Yeah, because the one risk for them is they're going to lose out on Abde, who looks like he's going to go back to Barcelona. They might see. Lose yeah, and uh, yeah, I have to have, have the. Let's see, where is that? Yeah, yeah, that's what we're looking for. Um, they might lose uh, uh, David Garcia as well. So, for Espanol, um, I'm sorry, not for Espanol, for Osasuna, is that a, is that an issue? Yeah, it's going to be an issue, but all the same. You- you are going to get at least you are going to get money for that Garcia, right? So yeah, you sh- you should like invest that money wisely. Like I'm sure some of these relegated teams, okay, none of them have any good defenders. What looking at, but other positions you could maybe try someone. Yeah, I mm. really could. If, if I'm if I'm Abdi, I would want to stay at Osasuna and have an adventure in Europe with them, rather than go yeah. to Barcelona. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, like, why not? Yeah, like, I don't, th- I don't think we, I don't think we really need another. If we were to get Messi, I think it will have to come at the cost of a couple of forwards at least. So yeah, maybe we we need him then. Like, no, well, yeah, but is, in- for example, if Barca had Messi, Rafinha, Dembele, maybe Ferran is in there, but Lewandowski is there. Why bring back Abdi? You know, I better bring a backup striker in that case. Yeah. But still, it's like, I feel like he's kind of ready now. But in if he's, if he's to stay at us as soon now, it's a, it's really good because he can continue his development. I just think it's unlikely because I feel like for Abdi, it's either he stays or we sell him. For cash on us as soon as I'm going to pay forty million for Abdi, so I think his time there is done. His <laughs> time there is, and um, let's move on. Let's talk about. Yeah, they have Kike Barra though. Kike Barra had really improved this season, so yeah, and he gave that right. assist for the second Budimir goal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Let, let's talk about teams that missed out. Athletic, they just missed out on it. Um, Ford and Ernesto we got. But points at the burnabout, unlikely points, and um, it seems like they're one of those teams where legends are going because Raul Garcia is leaving Athletic. But will you seriously? That? that according to Valverde, he might leave Athletic and Inigo Martinez mm-hmm. as well. But will you classify their season as a success or a failure because they've competed for Europe, which is something that you expect them to do? But given the fact that Sevilla weren't there in the league this season, you would have expected them to seal that seventh spot. Do you know? I'll I'll spoil one of my predictions now. Do you know why I picked this team to finish fifth? Fifth. Wow. <laughs> I was even tempted to say top four, but I was like, let me be reasonable. You, you were I wish at the start they were doing so well. 
Yeah, and at the start, I looked like a genius. I, I felt I looked like I lowballed them. But god damn it, man. I feel like this season has been so long. So many teams have gone on completely varying runs of form. It's not just Celta, like Athletic are one of the Chiefs in this case. Like they just sometimes they play really well, sometimes they absolutely stink. It's like you know, and obviously I think two of us before we were like the winner of us as not Jurena would obviously get you conference league, but we were like Athletic was as soon as a week or two before this was like huge as well. Like I felt like the winner there would have had a supremely big advantage. And Athletic Club, like when it comes down to destroying the like teams that are in the relegation zone, they do that. Yeah. When it comes to facing their direct rivals, <laughs> what what's football to them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah. I, I'll say it's this season is it, leaning more towards I don't say failure, I'll say underachievement because the potential was there. Sure. True. And for Rayo and Mallorca, I think this has been a successful season. They both play different styles of football, but they've done really well. Mallorca, they finished their top half team, apparently. God damn it, these predictions. I I don't think you remember what I said. No. Maybe you weren't on Twitter then, but you're going to be shocked when. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get onto that. Girona, they are also in the top 10. Rayo, they're 11th. And um, they're going to miss out on it. Rayo is obviously going to leave, so I, I would worry for Rayo next season. But it depends but I guess the team with that. Game. Yeah. Apparently, Rayo had the contract agreement of sorts with Sevilla, but then it seems they want to keep Mandela back. Yeah. So yeah. I saw a news where Rayo could actually stay at Rayo. <laughs> Yeah, so so let's 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 move on and let's talk about Sevilla because they are the Europa League champions, and because of that, they get to be in the Champions League next season. And wow, did you watch the shootouts? Did you see the game? Yeah, I saw. I stopped watching the game by extra time because I had to go out quickly somewhere. But I watched the shootouts, and I mean, once they got to shootouts, I just thought out the time like. I didn't even know Roma had terrible at penalties all season, but I'm like, Bonin Sevilla's goalkeeper. Like, they'll be all right. Yeah. It's already Europa League Sevilla, but adding Bono into it in a penalty shootout is just unfair. And, you know, it, you know... If I'd said on the podcast that Sevilla were going to not only stay up, but win the Europa League in January, what would you have said to me? <laughs> And I've called you an idiot. <laughs> I, mean, I, I know I don't like insulting people that I'm friends with, except my. Uh, I have still called you an idiot because I'm like, that's, that's one insane claim to make. But look at them now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, you know, it's this Paul Rudd meme where they're like, look at us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, who would have thought? <laughs> who would have thought? <laughs> yeah, it's. And they did it with Nemanja Gudeli as uh, the centre back. No, no, no let, let, let's let's refer to Gudeli. He's prime. No, no, he's, he's been really good this season. Like he's been great. His racket goals. He's like his overall improved play and everything. But but what, what's been the what's been the change and why why has it been so drastic with Mandela? But is it just playing simple football? That's what Sevilla. Yeah, I think that's what it is because look at compared to the nonsense San Paolo was asking them to do. Where every podcast I'd be crying as to why I don't understand what the hell is doing. Even the players, I think like Bade in one of the first games, I think it was after they beat Valencia, he told the Liga TV that they're doing simple stuff now. And honestly, that's what you need in a relegation fight. Simple stuff. And thanks to that, they actually almost got conference league. And but man, besides them staying up, I think them staying up were like, okay, even though it looks unlikely with the way they're playing, because the name of the name Sevilla, we always felt they would somehow stay up, you know? Yeah. Kind of the way, like, okay, maybe Valencia is kind of too. Okay, I guess Valencia's case is a bit different because you can clearly see this quality yeah. lack in there. But, I, but I think the difference between Valencia, yeah, you're right. The difference between Valencia and Sevilla is that Sevilla had quality players, but they were underperforming or maybe seriously just over underperforming. The edge. And while Valencia, the quality was yeah. desperate, was lacking. But yeah, so staying up, I mean, staying up 
you know, I think most people are like, there's worse teams than them, and maybe they'll get that together. But win the Europa League after beating Manchester United, who had beaten three teams who are better than Sevilla in the league this season, beating UV and then beating Roma. I mean, I, I think out of those four teams, they're, maybe they're not that impressive. Like, yeah, the, maybe people are just looking at the names or whatever, but to steal for a team that was threatened by relegation to beat all of them is simply fantastic. Like, yeah, I, man, I, like, I, they've really, Sevilla have really shown it's not about how you start, it's how you finish. Like, they really, they really embodied that statement this year. Yeah, they really did. And, and, and I know you're talking about all of the names, maybe we're speaking names, but in, for the Europa League, Juventus is a very strong team. Roma, mm-hmm, yeah. the, the obvious examples in Mourinho, Juventus would be fourth if you add the 10 points that they lost. Mm-hmm. Manchester United are third in England. So it's not like they're beating like Dnipro or, or Lens. No, no, or, no. Or, 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 all due respect to Lens, they're going to be the checkers again. They can make me look foolish next season. But you get what I'm saying? It's not like they're beating nobody. It's like they're beating this like really top teams who are doing decent in their leagues. So you have to give credit to Mendele mm-hmm. and what a story for me. Of course, yeah. Like, when he first came in, yeah, we spoke about the fact that he got in El- Ibar relegated, he got in Alaves relegated, and um, we worried a bit for Sevilla, but the one thing that I guess we feel to mention is that at Abar, the quality was always going down, and in when Abar were good, mm-hmm. he had players like Cordan, Kiel. He, he, kept, he had them right finishing top table. Top table, yeah. So you could tell that he yeah. had that overperforming streak, and Alaves, they were a team that this, they were just disastrous in recruitment. So um, it's amazing that he's what he can do at a team like Sevilla. And I'm really hoping tomorrow they do renew him and he stay, he gets to be in Champions League football. Imagine Mandela coaching a Champions League team. Time, yeah. But I feel like... <laughs> I love your sniper, I'm, I'm thinking about the time, like, you know what? With these kind of decisions, I feel it's better to go with your original plan. If you had a plan, like, I feel like... Hiring someone of emotion is. It's not well, a, I mean, you can not, pay. It's not emotion, though. Like, I, I, I know. I know. It's, is, it's, ta- ta- it's tactics, you know, were really good. It's just. These Champions League is a different beast, you know? No, no, it, it, but, it is. But let's look at the final, right? In the first half, Roma outplayed Sevilla, if we're being honest. But in the second yeah, half, he made, he made changes where he brought Lamela there, and it was almost like a 4 2 3 1, and Lamela was like interchanging you know, campus was going forward and that's what uh, led to the first goal in, in that sense and Sevilla were a much better team after that so I would say he's proven in European football so far that his tactics do work and I, I'm, I don't want to look at his age and say just because of his age he can't do it right because that will be a bit ageist and we've mm-hmm. seen old managers do it in the Champions League like Gasperini did it in his first season or mm-hmm. Pellegrini recently, but Betis has done it somewhat in the Europa League. So I'd like to give him a chance at least. He's, I feel he's earned it. Not just in terms of keeping Sevilla up, the way he kept Sevilla up, in that with three or four games to go, they were safe. I think yeah. that's very super impressive. And you add that mm-hmm. to the Europa League, you add that to just the way they play. It's good mm-hmm. to have that kind of Yeah, it is harder to like tell him we're not renewing you. But I feel like if the plan was always to get to Raola, in the summer, yeah. I feel it's wiser to follow through with that plan. You know what I mean? But I mean, keeping him is not bad, but I'm more like, okay, let's take, let, let, let's take my United for instance. Yeah, because everyone was so happy, like the team has improved, they gave Oli the job during the season. And what happened immediately after that? I know my United is a mess of a club at board level, but yeah, it is. Like, it is a cautionary tale, but I mean, I will be it lying. Is, if, is a risk. I'll be lying if I say I'm not looking forward to Mendy by playing Champions League football. I'll be lying if I. Yeah, because that's not risk. the case. I want to see yeah. it, but we'll see. Yeah, it we'll is. See. It is a risk, and you're right. I, I think the biggest risk is that you lose out on a manager like Iwerarola, who could be one of the next big managers in mm-hmm. in European football. And it's amazing how many vast managers are like that. You think of Unai Emery, you think of Iwerarola, Mendeleva, Lopetegui, like your vast managers, are, or Xabi Alonso recently for Bayern. Mm-hmm. Vast managers are doing really well. And I don't know. It's it's a it's a tough tough call. 
but I feel if you can tell Uriah or if you can maybe tell him you apologize for what's happened and you can give him uh, like some compensation and you can get him to wait to Uriah it might not be a bad idea if things go wrong he's your yeah. backup plan yeah yeah but we'll, that's we'll see. Yeah, that's Sevilla. Let's look at the rest of the teams that are going to be in the Champions League with Sevilla. Let's start with Real Madrid, who said goodbye to Karim Benzema. Um, he scored a penalty. That's a specialty. He's like Benzema this season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I guess it was a nice touch that Carlo immediately took him off after his cut. It's like last touch Real Madrid was a goal which ultimately helped them seal second place ahead of Atleti. So, I mean, from my point of view, Benzema is an absolute legend for not just the Real Madrid, but for La Liga. And even though there's some serious recency bias because of how good he has been recently, like overall, like he's been a really great, great player for La Liga. And you know, it it just won't feel the same without the guy there. No, it really won't. Mm-hmm. And he's had he's had an amazing career. Let's let's be honest. Like he's mm-hmm. came to Real Madrid. Real Madrid wanted to sign David Villa, but they couldn't. So they picked Benzema, and since then he's almost played that psychic role to Christ, either Cristiano or to Bale. And after Cristiano left, he's just taken the mantle from from Cristiano, and he's one of the reasons why they haven't they've missed him, but they haven't missed him too much. In that they've still been competitive in the Champions League. They've still been winning league titles like i remember mm-hmm. in the 1920 league title he scored a lot of goals and the 2021 league, ti- league title race he kept them it kept around in the title race to be honest mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. we have we don't have to say too many words about his 21 22 season what he did in the champions league the amazing comebacks and i love benzema not only as a player because i feel he's one of the most intelligent forwards in world football for his generation and mm-hmm. how yeah. he thinks in his movements in the way he caresses the ball. I really love that of him. But it's, it, the way he treats his um, teammates, apart from that, I comment about him. <laughs> that, <laughs> he, treats <laughs> he treats his opponents and stuff. Like, he he's truly is a class player. Um, yeah, he is. M- maybe his teammates we can always talk about Bob Brainer too, but, <laughs> but well, we're, we're, saying, we're, saying, we're saying good things about Benzema. Just, 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 don't, just listen, just don't search Benzema 15. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is, but just don't search it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, the person that was making a joke about Johnny Valencia was Benzema. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's better than saying he should join young boys. Like I'm not childish like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Real Madrid also said goodbye to some of the other legends of its club, like Asensio, Mariano. Has it? Right. <laughs> Damn, like yeah, like been. lots of lots of changes coming out real now. It's just weird. Like right now, as it stands now, they only have two forwards. Maybe three if you count Vasquez, but yeah, yeah. Like, I, I mean, you get Hosselu, and Hosselu has been Yeah, been Hosselu been. makes sense as a backup striker. Wait, 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 wait. Real Madrid is going to anyone. <laughs> I would love it, and I think I will deserve it. But on a serious note, Hosselu will be a good backup option because. Playing Rodrigo as a nine will only work so much. So yeah. I feel like you need a reference point to make Rodrigo and Vinny really shine more. As yeah, a backup, Hosselu is good. And Hosselu will give the kind of um, impact that song, like let's say Triple Moting gives in um, mm-hmm. Bayern Munich. Or Luke De Jong. Or Luke De Jong for Barcelona, where he can be super clinical. And he might not necessarily be the best forward, but he can come on in a tight game and he could provide that extra presence in the air. And he is a exactly. great ball to finish out Hosselu too. Um, but let's talk about Real Madrid in, as a whole in the season. They started really well, and everyone had them to be favorites to win La Liga. But as we said, they just couldn't keep up with Barcelona this season. Yeah, and I mean, when you look at it and you remember how Real Madrid have not defended a league title since 2008, so it's not really a surprise. But then... You also have to consider that a lot of the teams that went their way last season were just like you had besides Benzema's absolute brilliance, like the best season of his career, like you also had them um, some really miraculous moments that you'd like, how did they get away with this and then those margins were not there this season. Yeah. So, you know, like now the league could have been different or closer if Asensio had just stayed eight 
an inch or two on, on side that count now, for instance. So, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, sometimes you just lose out to a better team. I know there are Madridistas that are like, this season has been terrible, this season has been... But in my opinion, it hasn't been that bad. It's a drop down from last year. But you have to... If you're, you'll be lying to yourself if you're, you're not saying that last year was kind of miraculous at some point. So... Overall, I'd say they've had a decent season. Yeah, yeah, they really had. Um, Atletico Madrid, they had the opposite of Roma this season in that they started quite poorly. The, before the World Cup, they had a disastrous stretch where they didn't win a game in their last four games in La Liga. They got, they finished bottom of the group in the Champions League, a very achievable group with Porto, with La Bruga, with uh, Bayer Leverkusen. And... After the World Cup, we we're all thinking maybe it, it's the end of the era for Simeone. Simeone even said in an interview that his friends told him he should leave the club, but he was very stubborn and he believed in the team. And he's proven to be successful because in the second half of the season, they've been possibly the most entertaining team to watch in Spain. And they are they finished third and they were so close to finishing second. Yeah, like, but overall, I still... I think we still have to contextualize the fact that they did so terribly in Europe. And, you know, finishing second block obviously puts a bigger shine on teams, but they lost out to that in the last moment in the most <laughs> recent athletic way possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like they, they have, like, for what it's worth, and, you know, without trophies or, like, European success, it's worth quite little. But for what it's worth, they did play some really good stuff this year. Yeah, and it seems like they're going to reinforce their back line with Sonyuchu and a guy called Mourinho, who is uh, Uruguayan. People compare him to Araujo, but I'll be lying if I've told you I've seen more than five seconds of this guy. So, um, uh, this is the first time I'm hearing of him, but for Sonyuchu, I'm like, Sonyuchu is an obvious downgrade on what they have, to be honest. I'm like, I don't know how that's going to make them better, but I could be wrong. And they, I think what Atleti is really missing and what Simeone is really missing is a clinical nine. Like, whenever he's had that clinical nine for a full season, they won something. Either he had Falcao and they won, the, um, they won the Europa League the first season. They won the Copa del Rey the second season. They had the Costa was really clinical, won La Liga. And then when Suarez came in, won La Liga again. So... I think that's the missing piece for this team. They just need that nine who can score 25 to 30 goals a season. Yeah, that nine up can also score those goals at critical times because it's one thing to score braces against teams that are, in the, that, that are not really going to challenge you, but it's another thing to score them in like really important games. You know, so yeah. they need someone with that like elite mentality too. Yeah, they, they really do. And speaking of elite mentality, does Rasta Sedad have that? Because they're going to be in the Champions League next season. They're going to be playing teams like Manchester City, Bayern Munich, PSG. Are they ready? We'll see. But, I mean, it, it's a really big improvement to get into the top four, finally. So you have to congratulate them for that. I hope they can keep as much of. The, I hope they can keep this core of players and you know add quality on top of it. Hopefully, they still have some money. I mean, they should have money from Isak left over. So, yeah. if they don't spend it, and then they do bad this season, I mean, they can't really blame themselves. But they have an opportunity to do something really special. Yeah, and I I think the one thing about them compared to even Sevilla or Betis or Atleti is that. They're not a team that have been mismanaged in the past, or even when they've had the mismanagement, they've recovered from that. So financially, they're a very liquid team. They don't need to sell players. And mm-hmm. they've made 45 million off, I'm sorry, 70 million off Isak. They used 20 of, 22 of those money to buy Umar Sadiq. So, and they're going to get more money and more budget in the Champions League. But knowing Rasta Sina, they're possibly going to use the money left over from Isak to improve the squad, because I do think they need a deeper squad going into yeah, next okay. season because they're going to be fighting against really big clubs and if they get the kind of schedule that Sevilla got last um, this season it could be trouble for them with a limited squad and the injuries that they're so prone to having yeah, exactly even I think Villarreal have a deeper squad than them but even then Villarreal squad 
in defense is not as deep as it used to be a couple of seasons ago. So for sure, Russell said need to improve on that front. Yeah, yeah. Let's move on to Sp- speaking of Villa, Villa Real. Yeah, like, yeah, or you want to speak about the go- the goal that Pascal, this goal celebration, like, yeah. <laughs> what the hell was that? I think there's this guy in France used to do that, Gomez. Buffett in the Gomez. That, I, yeah. I tweeted it. I'm like, what the... I Honestly, like... I only, Maybe he's I'd a fan. You never know. <laughs> I'd let him were beefing with Vinny over dance. I'm like, this is this is more insulting. Why would you let us... Just... I'm just kidding. That's what we want. Yeah. Yeah, but... Oh, yeah. Sorry. I made a mistake there. <laughs> this should be Villarreal. But I was, like, stressed out. But Villarreal and Betis, they obviously round up the Europa League spots. And... Do you think it's a missed opportunity for both teams, given the fact that Sevilla were in Sevilla this year, and we expected these two teams, one of them, to get the top four spot? Yeah, it's a big, it's a missed opportunity for both of them. But I mean, at the end of it, it could have been worse. They could have missed out altogether if the other teams below them were competent enough. So yeah. I'll say it's still a good season. It's just like. You, you've the, the opportunity was there to really do something with it. Like you have the Barrel, they gave away points to everybody for absolutely nothing. LT for absolutely nothing. Like silly results like this, and then Betis. I feel with Betis, I can pity them a bit more because they had terrible luck with injuries. So yeah, the red card like, record the, is just terrible. The red card record, I, I don't have sympathy for, but the injuries part, like losing one, he was really, really good last year. Losing Fakir for a multiple part, losing Canales. And like, yeah, I feel sorry for them in that point. Like, I feel with a fitter squad, they could have really, they could have pushed her forth better than they did. But six isn't that bad. I just feel like with these two, actually, with Betis, they need to do better in Europe. Like yeah. in the league, I think constantly getting Europa League is already hard enough. But yeah. and they keep doing that yeah. too. Yeah, I'm going to put some perspective into like these two teams because we have to remember that Villarreal, in terms of the social mass of the club, they're not that big of a club. <laughs> so this would be like yeah. I know a lot of people are making them. They're hyping up the fact that Brighton made into the Europa League, but. Brighton, in terms of social mass, is a bigger club than Villarreal, in terms of just mm-hmm. fans and attendance and stuff. So it's still like almost a mini miracle that they keep on making it to the Europa League. But you are right mm-hmm. in that. I think given the quality of players that they have, they have to maybe make a step up next season and be closer to those Champions League spots than they already are. And the only thing, though, is that we might see this as a summer of change for Villarreal because... Samu might leave, Jackson might leave, Powell might leave. So mm-hmm. they might have to do a lot of placement <coughs> in the window. And definitely they need a new goalkeeper because Reyna... Two first, new goalkeepers. Yeah, two new <laughs> goalkeepers. Both of them are as bad. And I'll say for Betis, right? Um, obviously, fair play to Joaquin, and who's had an amazing career, as we've said. This is the... F- like, they've qualified for Europe for four consecutive seasons. The first time they've done that in their history. So, and we're, we're normally used to seeing Betis where Valencia is this season in terms of just, mm-hmm. or where Celta is, or maybe Mallorca. But we've come used to Betis being in Europe, which is yeah. not something that's happened before. So, like, they, they still, in terms of players, they can do better. And, but we just have to keep that in perspective that they are historically overperforming both teams compared to where yeah. they normally True. are. True. But it's also been nice if, like, the other teams, like Athletic Club and hopefully Valencia one day get that yeah. together and just also challenge. Because I, I feel like if if Real Betis and Villarreal don't, especially Real Betis, if they don't get pushed, yeah, they might end up becoming like Valencia or something. God forbid, but <laughs> no, it could I'll happen. Say, I'll say the one thing that you could say about. La Liga recently is that the top seven has become more or less like the same sort of teams, which Mm -hmm. didn't used to happen before. But like since the pandemic has definitely been the big four, the big three, Madrid, Barca, Atleti, Sevilla has been there a lot, Betis, Villarreal and Real Sociedad. And if Sevilla or Betis or Real Sociedad don't have a terrible season, 
it's been the same. And so that's something that hopefully with a stronger Valencia, maybe a stronger athletic club, there might be more competition for those Europa League places than there yeah. is right now. Because next season, if Sevilla have a brilliant season, there's no doubt they'll be top four. <laughs> Guaranteed. For sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but we're going to move on to Barcelona. And um, there were, it was teary eyes this season. Uh, Sergio Busquets said goodbye. Uh, Jordi Alba said goodbye. There's rumors about Messi. Goodbye to Piquet Cameroon. said goodbye. Piquet gets said goodbye a long time ago. <laughs> we, it's it's funny. The season has been so long that you almost forget that Gerard Piquet played in Barcelona. Yeah. <laughs> Inter Milan fans definitely do remember Gerard Piquet. <laughs> I don't remember him more if they win the Champions League. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway. Yeah, but how about you grade Barca season? Because they've... I, I, honestly, I, I think in... Domestically, I would give them an, an A star. An A plus because they've been mm-hmm. so... They've been heads and shoulders above the other teams that they compete with. Uh, in yeah. Europe, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to give them... Europe, this card... F, F, F is too... F is a bit harsh. I know, I know. I don't... I'll, I'll rather give them a like D or, or C because I feel... They played. They were in a tough group with Inter and with Bayern. They had a lot, lots of injuries in that double game against Inter Milan. But I feel against Manchester United, they possibly could have done better. They could have defended better. Shabby selection could have been a lot smaller. Yeah, I feel this Barcelona team have done really well when you consider that this is a team that's still in transition. Because right now, this is how the team is starting eleven. Is up there with the best in the world. The bench or the replacements for those in the starting eleven, however, there's a substantial drop off when maybe Pedri is injured or Araujo is injured. So I feel like that's that's the next step for the team, and it's obviously not easy when a team is battling FFP issues. So that's why, <laughs> and then all the cases off the pitch, the new stadium. So this league title, I feel, is really 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 important because hopefully to provide stability for the club like it's really like we we associate fans with that feeling of winning things so yeah yeah i'll yeah. say overall i give this season an a yeah it would like it would be an a star or even an s if they did well in europe but yeah they didn't so a is fine and and we also mentioned that a lot of these players like they're most of them are winning their first La Liga title. Mm-hmm. And that, that just shows how new this team is, how um, the size of this transition is for Barcelona. And it's like, you have to give them credits. And the one thing that I've seen impressed me with Barcelona, besides the fact that they've won La Liga, is that social the social mass is back in Barcelona. They had the record attendance in mm. the 21st century of Camp Nou, which is incredible. Better than Messi, mm. Barca, better than the MSS Barca. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing that I'll say Laporta has done really well. And if you're looking at the success of the famous Levers, he's re-engaged the fans. And I think that's something that would do him a world of good going into exactly. this difficult transition where they're going to play away from the Camp Nou and come back to the Camp Nou in two or three years. And yeah, it's a lot of changes for Barca and maybe Messi comes back. We don't know. We'll find out about this in a week or two if that disability plan ever gets approved. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't want to book my tickets for the... The thing is, I was thinking, I'm like, should I... If I book the ticket and I go, I might get to see Messi play live. Yeah. I mean, if not for anything, that's the that's the main reason to go and do it. So I'm like, if I book it yeah. now, it's one percent chance, ninety nine or hundred percent fit. So I'll just hold, I'll just hold up for now. Yeah, but yeah, I feel. I'm oh, sorry. I feel like yeah, this squad overall needs a lot of work. Like there's some players that we we can obviously do, like we we can get if the offer comes for them we'd be foolish not to take it there are some players that obviously we should not listen to anyone these players need to stay so yeah i feel like we need to like yeah and it's hard because of the ffp and everything but in ideal situations we'd have an overall better squad instead of like a really good starting level and then a couple of good players that that are on the side yeah, that Turkish guy who wears number eight for Man City, he looks good, doesn't he? 
He's Turkish? Yeah. German Turkish, yeah. I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean I'm seeing I'm seeing Gundogan in a free transfer and Nigo Martinez on a free transfer. Now these two would really improve the team. Yeah. So if they can get that done, that would be fantastic. Messi on a free transfer <laughs> would be nice. The issue is but, but, but what's it with the age an issue? Man, it, it's messy. But, like he's he's yeah. not like he'll he'll still add at the very least, I can watch Barcelona games without having IP. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> because but, uh, so yeah. the so the attacking was kind of dull this season. And yes, the age is an issue. Yeah. Yes, the amount of years he will be actually any good will be an issue. But yeah. as a club, <laughs> we owe him that much to correct how Bartomeu screwed him over. <laughs> That's just what I think. Now, if he doesn't come, I'll be fine. I'm like, I guess I have to look forward to Fern and Fatty next season. <laughs> I mean, it's not it's not bad, but you can improve on it. Yeah, you can definitely improve on it. And... Like, I, I definitely because if he comes, let's say he scores around fifteen league goals, assists fifteen league goals, that's much better than what they're doing. So yeah. Yeah, speaking of Barcelona, let's move on quickly to what went wrong for Espanyol and Elche. Obviously, they were already relegated going into it. Elche, I love this spirit. <laughs> they, they put... Nah, this guy, these guys are wicked. <laughs> these guys are wicked. Like, at, le- at, least, at least we're not actively hampering teams from their goals. You can call us unprofessional, <laughs> but we're not, we're not being... Like, look, the only team we beat was Mallorca, and they have almost nothing to play for. <laughs> Resources at one top four, we let them. Yeah. We We tried to help them, but they couldn't help themselves. And Celta, well, we did. I mean, they, they didn't really need our help. Celta always beat us once a season, so yeah. that was going to happen. Yeah, well, but yeah, what Elche have done is just weakness. I just thought, oh, wanted to be evil too today. <laughs> you want to take Ruby down with them. Yeah. Uh, but, but, yeah, Ruby and, Ruby and Barbara were able to escape. But yeah, what 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 is wrong? I mean, with Espanol, it's pretty easy. They don't have goalkeepers or defenders that are good. Or at least just garbage. Like, the goalkeepers they had this season were beyond garbage. Like, you can say that. Damn again. it. Like, do you need to see the, the error? Espanol did. Yeah, yeah, 69. That's years. where I, I thought it would be real bad the lead or Elche because of how many t- people absolutely trash over the nice. Damn, this is you, you know, last season we only had one team that considered 60 plus goals. Yeah. This season we've had four. I'm actually happy about that. Like, goal, it's, it's better to see more goals scored. <laughs> Yeah, and, and the the crazy thing is that Espanyol, they scored more goals than Real Sociedad. More mm-hmm. goals than, um, I guess, every team in the top seven, apart from, obviously, uh, or, like, they scored more goals than, taking out the big three, they scored more goals than almost every team in La Liga, apart from Villarreal and Girona. So you can tell that's that defense that's really letting them down. Exactly. Because like, it, it does, to be the it, seven, it didn't, yeah. letting them down is kind of, kind of, they, yeah. Sabotaged. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. they were a dead tree. As for Elche, like I feel with Elche at the beginning of the season, you had other teams around them making good improvements to the team. And Elche, the only thing they did was buy Roger Martí, and they lost Mojica like so late into the window. And Mojica was obviously one of their best players. So I felt like their reinforcement was just terrible and the people they brought in January, I mean by January everyone had written them off so it's not like Brandon Tech I was going to pull up trees or anything. So yeah, overall terrible planning, especially on the Spaniels part because the RDT team, I cannot say enough how much they messed themselves and him up yeah, and possibly they... Spain too because <laughs> if he was playing regularly he would have gone to the World Cup. Yeah, even the Barbara Lazzo trade that, like, already mentioned, that's something that looks makes them something I've not even thought about this thing because their problems are just so much. Yeah, but as you mentioned it, I'm like, you know what? And Barbara putting his team up on the Espanol Stadium, yeah. it's kind of funny. 
It is, it is. And if they had sold RGT for a reasonable amount, they got break weight and hustle for practically nothing. Maybe they could have invested that money in like two or three good center backs or a goal or a good goalkeeper. And that would have seen them safe because how can you be the sixth or seventh high school scorers in the league and you still go down? That's, yeah, that's, that's crazy. That's insane. Yeah. That's that's that, that, that really is. And that, that wraps it up for La Liga. There's still a lot of things that's going on in Europe. And you know what? I, I was talking to you about that theme about teams getting comfortable when they hear results from other stadiums mm-hmm. <laughs> and them subconsciously relaxing and thinking the job is done. And I know a lot of our listeners might not follow Belgian football, but this happened in Belgium to a very, very extreme degree because Union saint Gisoua, who I've been raving about, uh, they were going, they were one year up against uh, Club Brugge in the title race in Belgium. And Genk, they were 2-1 up against Royal Antwerp. And Antwerp are the teams that they're, that they're fighting against to win the league. So the players relax and they give up a one-year lead and they lose 3-1. <laughs> <laughs> to Club Brugge, and it starts in the 89th minute. They, that's when they start conceding. This was it was a it really truly was a masterclass in how to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory because <laughs> Antwerp equalizes and Antwerp win the Belgian league. It was truly incredible scenes. Yeah, like I feel with these things, like it's, it's you should. As, I mean, the coaches definitely do their best to not let the other players know, even if players on the bench maybe want to know. Even if they do know, they don't let the players on the pitch know or anything. But the fans, yeah, they can't really help it. Yeah, they can't really help it. And other things that went on this this weekend was a couple of cup victories. Uh, one for Leipzig in the DFB Pokal. So that means uh, Bayer Leverkusen would be in the Europa League. Xavi Alonso gets another crack at that title. Will be competing against Mourinho because Roma is going to be in the Europa League as well. Uh, Manchester City they won the Manchester Derby in the FA Cup, uh, two goals by the German Turkish Gundogan, and who's linked with Barcelona. Um, so Man City they have a chance to complete the treble against Inter Milan next week. Who are going to sponsor by Paramount Plus <laughs> in the final? <laughs> Does Inter have any chance of? causing an upset or is this going to be a couple of friends I have who are in armies they said that it could be a 7-0 7-0 <laughs> that, that, that's yeah. insane I mean yeah. well but they're prem boys so. after, after after hearing about Lukaku's new romantic interest I really got excited for this final because two things are going to happen <laughs> he's either going to miss three big chances or he's going to score a hat trick Honestly, after yeah. seeing him smoke a cigar, <laughs> I don't have more faith in him. Yeah, let's see. But, but, but you're the only thing I think I like. I think yeah. he shouldn't start that. I'm not saying this because he's dating Mega this time. No, I think they've, what they've been doing has been working with Zeko. So I feel like if he starts in, like, he should just come off the bench and, like, make, be a nuisance. I also don't know if Mkhitaryan is going to be fit for the game because he'll be a huge miss because... Yeah. Inter have actually done well without playing birds of between the Champions League this season. Yeah. So we'll see. It's still a week away, right? So. Yeah, it's still a week away. It's next week. Yeah. Uh, but for, for City, how big of a, how big of, of an achievement would this be? Because they will be the second English team to pull up a treble. Uh, After all good. that oil money, it's a surprise it's taking yeah. out. That's all, that's all I'll say, man. But for Guardiola... I'm going to say people need to put respect on his name. Even if he loses this Champions League final, like what he's done domestically for Man City, like all of these cavemen that kept saying, Oh, your style of football won't work in our league. <laughs> oh, this isn't the business thing. I ain't seen La Liga. He's turned like he's, there's no competition in England because Pep is a genius. Like, Look at the amount of trophies won since whenever. He's won 34. The next best has 10 or 11. There's levels to this. Like, this man, he might not be exactly the greatest manager of all time. I think there are, like, three or four people better than him in that regard. Even if he wins his Champions League. But the man gets too much disrespect from children on the internet. <laughs> That's all. Yeah, it seems like you needed to get that up your chest. Um, no, no, not really. I just wanted to... I just saw the opportunity to say it. And let me just say it. I'm sure none of our listeners are the kind of people that low-ball pep. Yeah. 
Well, it's also going to be another Anglo-Italian final in the Conference League, Fiorentina against West Ham. And one of England and Italy would have eight teams in Europe alongside Spain. Which one eight teams? Play? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I want Fiorentina to win, but I, I don't always get what I want. I mean, Sevilla win the Europa League, Argentina win the World I think I've already cashed out on what I want <laughs> to happen this season. But I just feel like it would be so Syria <laughs> of Syria <laughs> to get the three well. finals and lose all three of them. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, the, the Paramount Plus, right? Like, yeah. I can't lie, the, the super Italian coverage, and there's one Italian presenter that, or oh, IFTV guy, I just don't like his face. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean, I mean, I guess the Italian team is losing to have some merit. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it would not be so Ital- Italy of Italy to mess up three finals. Oh, man. <laughs> but then it's against England, and they did beat England in the Euros. So well, we'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see about that. Uh, th- taking things more domestic uh, before we wrap up, there was the whole issue of the Segunda playoffs or La Liga playoffs that was happening. And uh, we had games between Alaves and Abar. Abar hoping that Messi comes back so he can fulfill <laughs> the Abar man vision. <laughs> um, the more exciting game was Albacete versus Levante, and Jorge de Frutas reminded me about how why he should be playing in La Liga in that game. <laughs> Levante are three yeah. up, so and they look like they're going to go to the final. Yeah, I, I guess the streak of six plays getting to the final, getting to La Liga is going to be over. I mean, if Messi comes back, I feel like him playing against Albacete would be more nostalgic for like long term fans because. That was the first team he scored against. But, you know, Ebra coming up will be funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it won't be Like, funny. Uh, we won't be able to beat the allegations. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And, and for the Madrid and Barca kids, there was, like, the mini classical, the kids' classical between Barca and Madrid. Yeah, for promotion playoffs. And... Yeah. Honestly, yeah, w- w- why? Like, if we lose out, if Depor lose out on promotion to... It beats me. <laughs> yeah. The allegations, well, man. Yeah. Anyway, 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 time for my league table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, be- but before that, do you want to give us predictions for the two finals? Can I tell you the league table so you can see how terrible I am at predicting? First? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> okay. Should I start from top or bottom? Let's start from top. Go- bottom. Oh, bottom. Bottom. Bottom sucks here. Twenty. <laughs> 20th, I picked yeah. Almeria. No, 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 no. I'm yeah, not yeah, stupid yeah. for picking this one. I, I think after losing Sadiq and with so many new signings, all, a lot of people are picking Almeria. Yeah. And they yeah. stayed up by like, the skin of their teeth. So. Yeah, yeah. We, we said that in the podcast. They're a team where it was hard to pick because they could finish 20 or they could have a good season and be like Girona. Yeah. 19th, I picked Cadiz and. For a while, I was looking like a genius, but then, <laughs> I mean, they were in the relegations. But that, now let's see, did I get any of the bottom three right? 18th, I picked Mallorca, so no, oh, I got ouch. all three relegation teams wrong. Ouch, ouch, the Mallorca one is ouch. <laughs> yeah, that, that one is like, I think since September, I was well aware that I was going to look stupid in yeah. June because. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. I looked at America. I'm like, they're a solid team. I just don't think they'll have enough goals to keep them up. And then their top goal scorer scores 15 goals. <laughs> I almost swore. Yeah. Anyway, 17th, I, yeah. <laughs> 17th, I picked Real Valladolid. the lead. Well, if they remembered how to score goals, this would have been the case. <laughs> 16th, I picked Ryu. <laughs> To be fair, given how Ryu finished the season off, it, it was Yeah, be- I thought they would have another Levante situation, but they'd be better than Levante and they yeah. managed. But, you know, again, I would have looked more stupid enough for Sassuna, so I'm yeah. happy as Sassuna 
got the job done and didn't let Rayo Mallorca get into Europe because I would have been totally <laughs> stupid. 15th, I picked Elche. Okay. Why the Let's go F the did I... Way. <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> no, I, okay, I don't remember why I said that to finish 15th, even, okay, I remember, Francis was their coach, right, and they actually had a really strong end, they had a strong second half of 21, 22, so I thought, yeah. if they keep Francis too, they'll stay up, yeah, that's why, I, I was like, the lack of investment is not going to be too detrimental, but then after I made this, they sold Mohican, so, yeah, I still look stupid. 14th, I picked Girona. Yeah, that's I mean, okay. th- that's not bad, but look how they ended up. Yeah. Yeah. 15th, 13th, I picked Valencia. I guess Valencia <laughs> ended what? Let me see. So far, scores the league table is wrong, kind of wrong. Yeah, I'll check Valencia should game. finish up. Valencia should. Okay, it's because of the head to head. Okay, Valencia is saying yeah. 16th. Okay. Yeah, Valencia is Be- Because I threw him in. But it's thing. like. Oh, 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 okay, that... Yeah, it, it's a point away. Like, it's, I guess we can we can call that like a good one for you, to be honest. Yeah, this one is a good one because they are kind of. You would think teams that are like 11 and 13 will have around 40 ish points, and that's what Valencia had. So, yeah. Now, next, I picked Osasuna in 12th. Now, with this one, I was thinking. They'll be fine, like always, just that they'll have a minor drop off. Yeah. And how wrong I was. They yeah. had a huge upgrade <laughs> in the <laughs> cup. <laughs> and yeah, to be fair, you, you were not that wrong because they're like four points off 12th. Mm-hmm. So, like, th- there's credence there. Like, it's small margins at this point. Yeah, true. But, like, with eight, but with seventh position, right? Like, Sure. You're fighting for Europe with 12th. You're just thinking you just got by. You weren't really involved in relegation. Anyway, speaking of teams involved in relegation, I picked 11th Espanol. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> okay, now, yeah. to be fair to myself, I thought they were going to have both RDT and Hustle. Yeah, yeah, but we rega- re- regardless, man, like, they are not, like, because, and they made good signings too. Yeah. Like, they brought That's in. Exactly. It's a real, it's a real shame on Espanol's part that they yeah. let this happen to them. Yeah, because like like we said already in the already when we we're discussing them, they have the sixth best or seventh best attack in the league, but mm-hmm. the worst defensive record. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, go on. Ten, ten. Into the top ten, I picked Celta because I thought Kudet's ball would take another step. <laughs> well, Kudet okay. got sacked, and Celta. At a point, I was looking like a genius. I was looking yeah. like I even lowballed them because Gabi Vega exploded. And then today, by the skin of their teeth, they just survived. So, ha. Yeah. Uh, I think this one, next up is the worst one. Hetafe in ninth. Like, I, I was the biggest Hetafe dick rider this summer. And I'm never, do, I'm never doing that for any team. <laughs> I'm never hyping anything up again. At least not the way I did for these guys because I was like, wow, Sioane, Port. I was like, wow, what Munir? I mean, Munir turned out to be all right, but like, yeah, damn it, this this was this was it. Stink. This is the stinky. This is the stinkiest result here besides having the bottom three run. Now, eight is another terrible one. I think we also said that. Oh yeah, I because think I, I felt like, yeah. I, I felt like uh, if there's any team to drop out of the top. Six, seven, besides our guys with them, and well, they proved me wrong. Yeah, because a lot of the thing with Russ is that a lot of their signings have really worked out for them. That's something that we can say. Yeah, because mm-hmm. Kubo really worked, Bryce Mendes really worked, and that took them to another level. So a lot mm-hmm. took his game to another level as well. So mm-hmm. yeah, we have to give them credit in the recruitment mm-hmm. department because we wouldn't expect that. What mm-hmm. do you have for seventh? Seventh, I picked Sevilla. I was like. Because we, we, we saw like all the trouble going on Sevilla and like they won't drop so badly but I felt they'll drop seven and at a point we know how ugly it looks for them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, then I mean I guess this one kind of aged well because they were close to seventh at a point. Six I t- picked Betis. Well I actually got one right. Yeah, yeah, you got you got a spot yeah. on. Uh, spot let's on, okay. Top, let's see your top five. 
fifth, I picked Athletic Club. Oh. Yeah, I was expecting too much. Fourth, I picked Villarreal. And you know what? It, this was not my treasure because initially I put Villarreal third. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, of course, they, they let me down. Yeah. Third, second, third, Atleti, I got that. Second, Real Madrid, I got that. And first, unlike the rest of you that didn't believe in delivers, I believed <laughs> in delivers. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, first, I mean, we were so good. We chased Benzema out of Spain. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, but, but, I got but, four of these on, like, spot on. Some of the rest, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just shows you, like, because the top three was, like, it, it was somewhat easy to predict, but the yeah. rest of the league was just, it was just crazy. It's like, just yeah, the, the top three, everyone usually predicts the same thing. That's why I wanted to put Villarreal. To be honest, I wanted to predict Atleti out of top four completely because I just I was not I was not convinced by them at all. Yeah, it, it depends. But I, I but I thought like them dropping out of top four won't happen this season. If it was to, if it was to happen, like yeah, if they continued if, on if that won. trend earlier in the season, it, it would have happened next year. Yeah, maybe not this yeah. year, but I feel like it could. They were. On the way for it to happen, but I don't think that'll happen anytime soon now. Unless Simeone yeah, goes. World, yeah, the, the World Cup made such a big change for a lot of these teams that, I, and I think that's what changed the dynamic of the entire league. Exactly. Yeah, but next week we will delve deeper and we will grade these teams properly. But for fans who have enjoyed our journey through La Liga, I hope you've enjoyed this podcast. We've given all the teams the respect that they deserve and. Um, we have to say sorry to Espanyol, Elche, by the lead. Congrats to Barcelona, Sevilla, Real Madrid for winning titles. And also to Osasuna for finishing in the top seven. And with that, we're going to say adios. Adios.